What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with another Blender and Scatter tutorial for you. So the Scatter add-on is an add-on designed to help you scatter things across surfaces inside of Blender. So I will link to my playlist about Scatter in the notes down below so you can see more tutorials on this. But today, specifically, we're going to talk about how to use the camera clipping functions in order to create and mask um, a landscape inside of your models where you're only placing things where your camera is looking. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so I will link to Scatter in the notes below this video. Um, and this is the documentation page where it talks a little bit about some of the tools contained inside of Scatter. So um, I, can, I can link to this as well, um, just so you can go check that out. Um, the one other thing is we're gonna be using some low poly trees from Sketchfab. So you can download those from Sketchfab. Um, the artist's name is Rosie Jarvis. Um, it's the free low poly hand painted environment pack. So if you want to download that and follow along, you can definitely do that. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to go into Blender and we're going to start by creating a system for our landscape. So I've created this using the ant, the ANT landscapes function. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a system inside of scatter. So to do that, we're going to tap the N key and then we're going to go find the option for scatter. And if you remember, what we need to do first is we need to set a target, which makes sense because we're basically telling this um, where we want it to scatter our objects. So we're going to click the little eyedropper. We're going to click on this surface right here. And now, we need to tell it what to scatter. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to take these two trees that are in here and we're going to click on the button for scatter. And that's going to create a system where this scatters these objects along this surface. And so we're going to make a couple quick changes. So first off, I'm going to up the number of objects that are being emitted to something like, we'll call it 2,500 for right now. Um, I'm going to leave my display percentage here at the moment. And so what we want to do now is we want to add a camera. And so the camera is what we're going to use in order to set our visibility, right? And so what we want to do is we want to adjust two things because we only want to place these objects where our camera is looking. Otherwise, you're just eating up a ton of processing power for absolutely no reason, right? So if your camera view, for example, is going to be right here, there's zero reason to need trees way over here because you're not going to see them. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust this so that we have camera clipping so that we only see the trees in this location. And so to do that, what you can do is you can scroll down and you want to look for the option for masks. And so what masks is going to allow you to do is that has a bunch of different options in here for general, Boolean, geometry, and camera. Notice how the camera options are all grayed out right now. Well, the reason they're grayed out is because we haven't added a camera. So let's do that first. We're going to do a shift A and we're just going to add a camera. Then we're going to hit the zero key in order to fly into that view. And we're just going to scroll back so that we've framed out the area where we want our trees to show up, right? So if I close that menu, this is basically the view that we want to use in order to create a rendering of this scene. And so what we want to do is within our masks, we now want to create a new mask. And we're just going to clip on, click on the button for clipping. And so when we click on the button for clipping, what that's going to do is that's going to create a mask inside your mask section that we can now adjust. And we're just going to leave this on simple cl clipping. We, we're not going to talk too much about ray casting or anything like that for right now. The simple clip, clipping is going to work great for what we want to do. And so notice how when we did this, nothing actually happened. Right, And the reason nothing actually happened is because we haven't applied this clipping to our scene yet. So what we need to do is we need to make sure this system is selected. And then we just want to click on the button for add influence to selected system. Well, notice how what this does is this clips out anything that wouldn't fall inside of this box in our view. So if I tap the N key, we look outside of this, notice how there's no trees outside of our camera view. So if I was to hit zero and fly out of this, you can see how basically it's like lines were drawn from this camera in order to show this exactly where those trees needed to be. And so let's say, for example, we'll go back into this camera view. Let's say, for example, that you needed this to be a little bit wider, right? So you wanted your trees a little further outside of this box. Well, what you could do is you could come in here and you could go to your FOV, your field of view, and you could adjust this 
outward like this. So if I adjust this to like 1.82 and click on update, notice how the trees are now much further outside of this uh, view. So that means that you don't get this cut off on the outside, but this is a little wide, right? Really, we want maybe like 1.35. So we're going to type in 1.35, click on update. Now we've got these trees and they go slightly outside of our camera view. And so you may have noticed that there's also a lot of trees being placed way back over here where we don't really need them, right? Because you're not going to be able to see them again. And so we can add another mask in here called distance culling. And what distance culling is going to do is distance culling is going to basically get rid of trees beyond a certain distance inside of Blender. So we're just gonna tap the N key and then go back into our masks function and we can minimize this uh, camera clipping, but now we wanna add a new mask. We wanna call it distance culling. So we're gonna click the drop down and select the option for distance culling. And so we can use this to adjust the distance from your camera in which this is going to place objects. So for example, right now, if we were to just select this system and just click add influence to selected system, we'll notice how that's placing all of our trees right here, right? So it's basically only placing these inside of the 394 inches that are in here. And I'm gonna go into my units real quick and change this to, we'll call it feet. So just because those units make a little bit more sense to me. So instead of having 33 feet, let's say we want this to be 200 feet. So I'm gonna type in a value of 200 and hit the enter key. We'll notice how that's a little bit too long, though it is kind of hiding some stuff in the background here. But let's change this to like 150 or even 100. You can see how this is adjusting the distance based on the value that we place in here. And so notice how at the very front of this, our trees are a lot thicker. And then as we get further away, they're getting thinner and thinner and thinner. That has to do with the fall off that's in here. So if you want to adjust that, you can adjust your fall off so that this is maybe more of a linear curve or something like that. So if this gets really high, right, then what's going to happen is it's going to call out all of your stuff really close. So you can kind of play around with this a little bit um, in order to get the results that you want. And so now notice that we're able to place just the trees that we need based on our camera location and the distance from the camera. All right, so let's add another system. And in this case, let's add the plants and rocks in here. So we're gonna do the exact same thing. So we're gonna select the surface right here, but we're gonna select a different kind of scattering. So in this case, for example, let's say, we'll just go with the simple children function. Well then, we wanna select the objects that we wanna add. So I'm just gonna go through, do a shift click right here, and then, and I think I'm not gonna select the rocks. I'm just gonna select these plants for right now. So then I wanna click on the scatter function. And so when I scatter this, notice what this is doing is this is placing a ton of these plants on the ground right here. And it's using the children function in order to do this. Well, notice how I'm immediately seeing a reduction in the performance of my model. Right, and the reason for that is because this is placing a ton of these objects in here. What we wanna do is we wanna do the same thing. So we wanna add the camera clipping. So we're gonna go into our tweaking function and select our simple children system that we're using for our plans. And we can just scroll down. Well, these masks are already in here. So all that means is that means that all we have to do is just click on add influence to selected systems with those selected, and that's gonna mask these out automatically. And then I'm gonna add the distance culling in here as well. So now if I look at this from like the top down, you can see how we're only showing these plants in the locations where my camera can see them. So this is something that you can apply to different systems once you get the first ones created. So now if you look at this, you can see how this is only showing up inside of my camera view. So that's from in this video, you can see that this is a very powerful system, not only for placing a lot of objects inside a blender, but also for controlling the number of objects that are placed to help you with your performance. So um, leave a comment below. Let me know what kind of videos you'd like to see with Scatter in the future. If you like this video, 
please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, so make sure to check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.